The fifth round of the 2014 Blancpain Sprint Series sees the teams and drivers head to the Algarve in Portugal. The undulating circuit is a real challenge for the drivers and it usually provides some exciting racing. But first of all, let's look back to the last round in Slovakia. Polman Cesar Ramos got a poor getaway in his Audi and that led to a chain reaction at the first corner with a number of cars eliminated. One of them, the championship challengers, Harry Project and your own Blika Molen out at the first corner. Ramos there on the left-hand side as we look at the replay of the start. Involved in that was Enzo Ede and also Nicky Mayer Melnoff went off into the tyre barriers in the early stages as Alex Zanardi was working hard, he losing out to Marc Basseng in the Phoenix Audi. And that contact meant that Zanardi had to come in to pit with a left rear puncture and he was out of the race. The Fortec Mercedes had made a good start, running in fourth place in the early stages, but they soon lost out to the HDP Mercedes. And there was the evidence of the damage from the first corner on Cesar Ramos's car, which was severely affecting his handling. But he was the next man to make it past Miguel Toril in the Fortec car, up the inside into turn nine, as the Mercedes started to slip back down the order. Vincent Abril had a little look to the inside but wasn't quite close enough to pass the Fortec car. As the pit stops came, it was the 84 machine of Nico Verdonk and Maximilian Goetz that took the lead of the race. Kaka Bueno was frustrated. Lawrence Vanthor was now at the wheel of the number one car and he decided to do some rally crossing on the exit of turn two. He managed to emerge unscathed. A mistake from the race leader then allowed Sergio Jimenez to sweep past and take the lead of the race. The charge was on with Lucas Wolf as he tried to force his way past Alessandro Latif. But Sergio Jimenez in the zero BMW was the man in the lead, but not for long because Dominic Bauman surged past him with a superb move around the outside of turn six on the penultimate lap of the race. And it was the Schubert BMW team who took victory seemingly from nowhere in only their second event in the Blancpain Sprint Series. Dominic Bauman and Thomas Jaeger onto the top step of the podium in Slovakia, but it's still Maximilian Goetz in the HDP Mercedes that leads the championship. Slovakia was yet another frustrating weekend for Laurence Van Thor and Cesar Ramos in the number one WRT Audi. They won the qualifying race as they have done on previous occasions this season, but it's not coming together when it matters. It's actually more frustrating than, than even disappointing because we, we qualified the car and have you raised on the front row with two pole positions and two qualification race victories. And somehow on Sunday we don't manage to, to get any result. I think we learned in the last couple of races it's not only about being quick, because we've been quick the whole season, but we have to gather our, our points together and uh, that's, that's our main focus uh, at the moment. After Thomas Eng's spectacular crash last time out, the writer engineering crew had to build up a whole new Lamborghini. This weekend they're also part of the G-Drive squad with Roman Rusinov. As I said, the car is... Uh my damage but uh, luckily you know I survived with all the safety around me the roll cage the seat belts the safety is just amazing on the Lamborghini so I actually came up from the accident without an injury at this moment we feel like Lamborghini is the car to have on this circuit so we'll see throughout the whole weekend but uh, at this moment we are very positive BMW Team Brazil had their strongest meeting in Blancpain last time out at Slovakia, almost winning the main race, with Sergio Jimenez losing out with just a few laps to go. But they know it may be more difficult here in Portugal. It's a bit, uh, a bit tricky for BMW here because we have uh, turns with second, third gear. That is not our best, but I think we will not have a good qualifying. I mean, front row or something like that. When the race we are we're growing up a lot, so that's my expectation that we grow a lot in the race and that we can fight for a podium and maybe for a victory. The Bitech McLaren squad have been gradually improving so far this season and Giorgio Pantano has made some incredible starts, not least last time out at the Slovakia ring where he went from 20th to 4th at the first corner. This weekend though it may be more difficult for he and the team. We have some issues with the car at the beginning of the season, the first um, four races I would say. Uh, we probably find the problem, but we are new on this championship. Uh, we are competing with a very strong team. But I believe on this weekend uh, we can be a bit more closer. I'm sure we can do something well this weekend. They only made their Sprint Series debut in Zanvoort, but Dominic Bauman and Thomas Jaeger have been mighty impressive. Second in Zanvoort and winning the race last time out at the Slovakia ring. Will it be the same story this weekend? Here at Portimao, the BMW should be quite competitive. Uh, the fast corners, we are really good there, and in slow corners we have to find our way, to find a good setup. But overall, uh, it's always a fast car, we won last time, and also with the Pirelli tyres, we should be, should be quite good. 
After missing the previous round in Slovakia, Max Buk is back at the wheel of the 84 Mercedes alongside Max Goetz. But now that he's missed out on the points from Slovakia, his main focus is going to be helping Goetz to the title. I think I would try to help Maxi as much as I can because I can't really reach his uh, score of points. I think every race is a bit of a new story. As every main race we have a different winner. So I think it's a bit difficult to say who can be the main rival or not. We just focus on ourselves and I think that should be the best strategy we have. Currently leading the Pro-Am standings is Alessandro Latif and Marc Basseng. Latif has been learning from Basseng in his first real season of GT racing and last time out at Slovakia they were running towards the front. They'll be hoping to perform similarly here in Portugal. That was the first situation we've actually been like near the front, so obviously the pressure was quite high for me to bring the car home safely. Uh, so for sure, there's uh, now that I've been there and I know what it's like, for sure I've got more performance to give. The Portuguese squad Sports and You are entering two Mercedes into their home race. Both cars will be in Pro-Am. Antonio Combra and Luis Silva sharing one SLS. Paulo Pinheiro is in the other, sharing with Francisco Mora. It's very nice. The Mercedes here is, is quite good. It's quite a good car. I, I, I enjoy driving about this, this car, especially here, because it's a good circuit to the characteristics of this car. And I think that we have all the things to do a, a good result here. To all teams, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Five minutes to go. Five minutes, five minutes. Feel great, feel great. Okay, Lorenz, three minutes signal now. Okay, Stefan, in one minute it's lost. And green lights, green lights. Boa corrida. Cars coming into final corner. They're with the starter and we're green. Go, 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 go! A very good afternoon and welcome to Algarve in Portugal for the qualifying race ahead of the fifth round of the season in the Blancpain Sprint Series. My name is Jack Nichols. Alongside me here in the commentary box is John Watson. John, yesterday we had glorious sunshine. It's not quite the same today, but it's still pretty warm. It's still warm, 27.2 Celsius, 33.7 on the track. But look above you, there is a dirty big black cloud. <laughs> it's sort of hovering over the top of the racetrack. We don't think it's going to dump its precipitation. We never know. So the cars are making their way now around towards the final corner here on the formation lap. They're starting to line up in their side-by-side -side formation and it'll be Thomas Enger on pole position in the orange Lamborghini, the G-Drive Racing Lamborghini. The red light's about to go out, the qualifying races go here in Portugal and it's a good start for your own Bleekemolen by the looks of things as they make their way down. Thomas Enger on pole position has got away well, but Bleekemolen's into the lead of the race. Looking up the inside there is René Rast, but it's also a good start from Max Buch. And René Rast is going to get through into third place. All the way around the outside goes for the other WRT Audi. I think that's Lawrence Van Zor. And oh, that's a big moment. I think that was Ortelli in the nine car who really hit the uh, hit the curbs hard and that sent him out wide. But everyone's safely through the first few corners. I think Ortelli might have got a problem from that. Yeah, into turn one and turn two. There's a problem at the back of the field. But one of the Audis that may have been Lawrence Van Zor went right off racetrack and almost tried to make a position. I don't think he managed it, but certainly that's what I'm talking about. Abuse, in his case, more force measure. So through the hairpin of turn five they come, and now climbing up through the left-hand kink of six, but our race leader is Jerome Bleekemolen. Second place is Thomas Enger. Third is René Rast. And fourth at the moment is Maximilian Buch. As they all wind their way now and start to climb the hill. Oh, the two row out BMW, but BMWs have hit each other. Zanardi coming together with the 34 car, which has been right, started by left, Colombo. Left front suspension is and broken. And that is a disaster for the team. So up now they come towards turn number 14, and then into the right-hander of 15 that sees them drop down the hill and through the incredibly quick final corner and out onto the start, finish straight again. So, oh, and there's going to be contact there as well. 
And that is and Alessandro Latif who's sent spinning. And he's caught the right rear of the McLaren. It's also like two cars. Certainly the McLaren isn't going to go very much further by the looks of that damage. Heidi may be able to get going whether there's a tire contact. There is the BMW. That was on the exit of turn eight. McLaren has managed to get a spun run, but I think there's damage to that right rear. But now, look, the battle's on for second place. Thomas Enger under a lot of pressure from Rene Rast now as they come through the uphill left-hand flick at turn five. Down towards the hairpin of six, Thomas Enger will surely try and cover the inside line under the heavy braking zone. The Audi really strong on the brakes, not so quick in a straight line, looks to the inside, but he's not quite close enough as they come into the left-hander and now start to climb the hill again. Down the inside, that's a great pass by the BMW. The Bauman by yes. Lazowski. Yep. So that good clean pass, that's what you can do. Safety car has been deployed. I'm not surprised there's traffic and cars all over the place. And here's a replay of the start. Blinkerbola just got a better getaway and, and took the lead of the race. Enger managed to do well to hold on to that second spot, but it's this middle black Audi here. Keep an eye on that. It gets passed by Van Thor around the outside and then goes to the inside of the Mercedes. The Mercedes then closes the door and Ortelli's forced over that uh, over that curving on the inside. In fairness, I think you have to say Stefan was Stefan Ortelli was being somewhat aspirational and believing he was going to get that position where there's, again, a closing gap. The Mercedes was going to take its line and the Audi wasn't sufficiently far forward. Gets well and truly airborne and no doubt when it crashed down, not doing the left front suspension or any of the suspension any good at all. So your own Blikamolen managing the pace, managing the safety car restart here because the safety car has pulled in. Blikamolen drops the throttle and away he goes. Let's see who can stay with him as we go back racing here in Portimao. It's a good restart from Van Thor. He's right up the back of Max Book. And Max Book actually has lost a few positions as they flash through this final corner. Absolutely fantastic to see. And then there's a big old gap back to the Audi there. So Marcus Winkelhock, I don't know what's happened to him, but he must have a problem. He's coming into the pits. Yes. Has Winkelhock got some sort of puncture? I Possibly. think he may have a puncture. His car looks slightly unstable. Didn't look at racing speed coming through turn 15 as we go back to the front of the field and the two Lamborghinis. The big loser there was Maximilian Buch as if he was getting caught out. There, the second in the McLarens and Dominic Barman in the BMW having their own little private battle. And the BMW much quicker on the exit of the corner, mainly because I think McLaren took the sort of the, the line that was. Uh, and they were all Good held. for overtaking, but not necessarily quick as time. They were all held up behind Finkelhoff was the problem, and so that created a really good overtake opportunity because obviously no one could pass Finkelhoff before the safety car came in. So that means Chris Van der Drift is up into eighth place in that McLaren. Ninth behind is Dominic Bauman. Tenth is Mateusz Lesowski. What but a he's pass. got Sergio Jimenez trying to go around the outside, but he's unable to do so. So Lesowski holds on to that tenth place. Uh, well, it's not as simple as a puncture, is it? There's been a bit, bit of concern. This is a bit of action, isn't it? Up the inside, this is still the battle between Lesowski and Jimenez, and Jimenez has finally made it through. Nelson Piquet might try and follow through as well as they come down into the right-hander, and he does so well. Lesowski's trying to hold on around the outside. That is good stuff from the pole, and he's managed to hold the place. That's going to compromise both of them, though. Here comes Stefan Landman in the Grasa Racing Lamborghini behind. Can he try and take advantage of that battling? He looks for the inside, and yes, he's going to get both of them is he down into the hairpin good work from Stefan Landman no Lazowski's still there still holding on good racing down towards the hairpin they come and watch out for the Audi just behind this lot here we go and it's Van Thor who holds the place for the time being good racing in the middle of the pack and this is good news for Thomas Enger because he has now managed to sprint clear up in, uh, up in second place. Dosseldorf trying to get along, but it's the wrong side of the racetrack to go up into turn seven and then back in on the gears, down the brakes into turn eight. That's where the contact occurred and very close indeed between the nose of the Mercedes and the tail of the Audi, but they managed to do it without contact. The pit stop window is now open. I'm not imagining any of the top seven or eight to come into the pits, but we'll wait and see as they stream across the line now. It's just well, it's less than half a second for the lead of the race. Your own Blicamona against Thomas Enger, and what I mean, what a pair to do battle that is. So experienced, the pair of them, so quick, and this is going to be a very interesting battle of wits. Well, I think we'll again see the BMW and the McLaren down into turn one. Again, the problem the BMW has got it is basically of all the cars here, it's the slowest in a straight line quick off turn 15 that's where it's gaining the advantage but we can't do very much with the uh, McLaren it's just too soon let's look and see how much of the track now that is exceeding <laughs> track limits into in. the pits comes I Maximilian think. Buch then he's coming in to hand over to Maxi Gertz as they come down towards turn one and you know what's happened that's released now Lawrence Van Thor who has been 
really trailing the Mercedes all the way through. Now he's got clear air. He's sort of going to laser into the back of Thomas Enger in second place Lamborghini. So we're at the halfway point in the race, less than 30 minutes to go. And it's your own bleak mode leading the way. Thomas Enger there second in the G-Drive. Writer Engineering Lamborghini, third place and fourth place are the two WRT cars of Rene Rast and Lawrence Van Thor. Who's oh. going to blink Whoa, first? What a big moment oh, he and got Thomas it Enger squirrely, lost squirrely. It. And that loses him second position and third position as well. What a big moment that was for Thomas Enger. He held it all together, but has he now lost the chance to battle for the lead of the race? He's side by side with the Audi as they come down the start finish straight. But Van Thor will have the inside line and he'll move through into third place. Well, I'd like to see a replay of that because it looks like Thomas Enger turned the car in quite aggressively. But the back said, sorry, Thomas, ain't going to watch the back of the car. There she goes. He had to get out of the throttle on that one because otherwise it was going to continue going round and Rennie Rass said, thank you, Thomas, I'll take that any day of the week. All over the back of him now is Steph Dusseldorf. There is reports of rain on the circuit, and I think that might even be a bit of sort of rain you can see on the camera lens, and here comes Dusseldorf, he's going to get the inside line, and he's going to take fourth place away from Thomas Enger. The Mercedes goes through, and Enger goes down into fifth position now. It's going to be slicks for the... G-Drive Lamborghini and slicks really at the moment the only option because the rain is nowhere near properly coming down, the track's nowhere near wet enough. But now we're going to have some action in the pit lane because all of these cars are going to have to peel to the right and come into the pits. Look at those clouds and uh, oh, that was a lot of speed taken through from Van Thor. So in they all come and basically the man we're going to be waiting for and look how close Dominic Bowman is now to the back of this lead pack having started well down the grid but the man we're going to be looking for is the 84 Mercedes of Maximilian Goetz he's going to be the man to watch he's in uh, ninth place at the moment he's in the second sector as it stands but will he be able to get out anywhere near these guys up at the front there's Enger handing over to Rusinov yeah I'm just I'm trying to look out of the comedy booth which is literally facing the start finish straight to see if those black clouds are actually doing anything other than hovering over the racetrack it looks dark in turn one and around turn two Hasn't rained heavily enough to make anybody concerned. There's the Lamborghini rolling. Great Sorry, stop. project. Great pit stop from the whole team. Uh, so then out in second place Rasa will come Racing. Enzo Ede. He looks like he's pulled out behind uh, Harry Project, but where is the Mercedes? There it is. Is that it there? Just coming through on the right-hand side? No, it's not. It's the it's the older, um, it's the Pro-Am Mercedes. This is the one to watch out for coming down the hill now. And it is going to be the lead of the race for and Harry Project, but it's second place now for Maximilian Book, who's but now handed over to Max Goetz. The key is he's up to speed. Harry Project's just left the pit lane. He's got fresh rubber on. He's going to be gobbled up by the German if not into turn four, but into turn five at the half, and he's got the momentum, he's got the warm tires, he knows what the car feels like and handles like. Harry Project's going to be looking in the mirror wondering, what can I do to defend? Well, he can really try and outbreak the Mercedes, but Goetz up the inside should have the drive off the corner. He's done a Project, good job there. But Harry Project certainly is not afraid to put his foot in it. Thumbs up from Steph Dusseldorf. If Max Goetz keeps doing that, he yeah. could get telling off. And also, he ends up doing the same thing. Maximilian Goetz driving the Mercedes. Maximilian Book watching. You could see his face thinking, oh, my teammate needs to be careful not to do that again. Again, Maximilian Goetz beginning. If we look again at the replay of Maximilian Goetz, runs wide. Not only runs wide, he gets all four wheels over that red white track. If you like to call it delineation. Team manager of car 28 and 27, i.e. the Grasser Racing team manager, which is Gottfried Grasser, has been called to race control immediately. And there is Gottfried, and uh, he's not quite on his way. He's about to take his headset off and head up to uh, race control by the looks of things. Down towards the final corner comes our race leader, Harry Project. They've won two qualifying races so far this season at Browns Hatch and at Zandvoort. There is uh, Ombar running behind, and he's got Enzo Ede about to make a move on him. The blue flag's being waved for the back marker as they come across the line with 16 minutes to go. Enzo Ede still the same, 2.7 seconds behind. Cesar Ramos not really putting in much dent on Enzo Ede's advantage. They're lapping very similarly. Yeah, and Russia, Russia, now going to pass Russia, the... Russia, uh, Russia, Russia. Oh, that's all got a bit close in there, and do they touch? Oh, They've got very, very close as Enzo Ede was trying to lap Antonio Quambra. 
but here's the lead battle. Down into turn number one. Five and a half minutes to go. Still, Enzo E comfortably clear of Cesar Ramos in fourth place. Uh, Thomas Jaeger, has he managed to start the close in again on Roman Rusinov? Uh, no, not really. It's still about five and a half seconds. In fact, he's got Vance on Avril right up behind him still. And uh, Bueno and Stumpf are still right together for 10th and 11th places, uh, with Basseng and Stempentis in that crew as well. So, battles throughout the field, but the race lead is very, very close at the moment. I'm talking about Vance a million goods. Well, it has. So this is Vance on Abril trying Absolutely. to get past Thomas Jaeger in the battle over seventh position. Abril right up behind the BMW as they come down to the hairpin. Will he fancy a look to the inside this time around? Not quite. No, Abril is leading the Silver Cup, but the car behind is second in the Silver Cup, Lucas Wolf. So this could get uh, very interesting, especially with the straight line speed of that Mercedes. Yeah, I mean, not that the, the Thomas Jaeger is deliberately letting the Audi draw up to the back of the BMW and, of course, letting the Mercedes draw to the tail of the Audi. Thomas Jaeger is doing the best he can to try and run down the sixth place Roman Rosanoff in the uh, what was pole position. Lamborghini and Vance Abril. He's, he's very racy, looking to dive down the inside. Not a good place to do it. And uh, the door of family shut by Thomas Jaeger. But Vance Abril needs to be aware that behind him he could have a challenge and a threat to what would be uh, the lead of that task. Yep. Eighth place at the moment for Abril, seventh place with the BMW in front, which is Thomas Jaeger, and then behind is Lucas Wolf in the second HTP Motorsport Mercedes, uh, third HTP Motorsport Mercedes, I should say, currently second, fifth, and ninth in the HTP cars, and they come out onto the start finish straight, all of them going very wide on the exit yeah, of the final Yeah, Thomas corner. Jager particularly was well and truly off the racetrack. Just quick look into the faces of Anselm Vals and Pierre Dudonne as, again, the BMW has to be defensive on the entry into Turn 1. Oh, I Van thought he was going to go for the outside there, Abril, but that could compromise him because here now, surely, will come Lucas Wolf. He's not quite close enough, but uh, another moment like that, and Wolf will be there to try and take advantage of that, I think. Yeah, that, that was, I mean, testy stuff. For Thomas Jaeger and for Vance and Abril, there was almost a point where I thought Abril could make the cutback into Turn 3, but he didn't really have quite the ground to do it. Down again into Turn 5. You can see the front of the Audis that patters over the bumps and the braking zone as they come down that hill. So Mercedes dropping back fractionally from the tail of these two cars battling, currently over 7th place. Front is down to six cents of a second, but it's still. Oh, here's the overlap for Abril. Has he managed to get it out of the corner? It's a good move from Abril, but the next hand is a left hander. He's going to try and go all the way around the outside. Great stuff from Vance on Abril. Now he'll have the inside line, and the WRT Audi goes through. We saw Abril flying at the end of the qualifying race in Slovakia, and he's doing it again here. And that, as to me, is the overtake of the race so far. To do it around the outside of turn nine, up the hill into turn ten, takes, believe me, a lot of commitment. And that was what you just watched there. Young man, fully committed and going for it. Credit to Thomas Jaeger, he could have squeezed and pushed him. He didn't do it. And uh, that was uh, good motor racing. On to the penultimate lap of the race now, with Harry Project leading the way. Maximilian Goetz is behind him in second place as they turn through the right hander once again. It's these two who have been untroubled really and only that one real attempt from Maximilian Goetz to to get past in the early stages as they come down towards the hairpin and possibly a little bit more rain out there coming just towards the end of the race not even towards the end of the race it pretty much is the end of the race but we're seeing a few spots we'll see whether it has any impact in the double right hander of eight and nine one minute and ten seconds left on the clock, so this will be the penultimate lap. What has Max Goetz got? Look at the clouds. Does Max Goetz have anything? As they come through the final corner to start the final lap of the race. Across the line, what's the difference? It's just under seven tenths of a second. And look at the windscreen wipers on Enzo Eads' car, further back in third place. Do we have a final twist in the tail? As the clock counts down to zero, there's Joan Bleekemann on the right, Godfrey Grasser on the left. 
Milling, Harry Brodick to hold on and to take their first win since the qualifying race in Zamvoort. All the way back in July. And oh, there's a spin for Thomas Jaeger. What's happened to Thomas Jaeger? Such a shame. He had such a good drive, but he has ended up facing backwards. I think that's down at turn one. Yes, it is. Here's a look at the replay. He's gone defensive. Lucas Wolf has tried to go around the outside, and away goes the back end. And Thomas Jaeger will be so frustrated with himself for that because he was running up in seventh, uh, in eighth place, and he has now dropped behind Wolf. I think both the Brazilian BMWs went past him. He's probably down in about 14th position now. But here are our race leaders. Only a few corners to go now. Climbing up the hill through the left-hander. Harry Prochik has been asked many a time this season to hold the lead of the race, to hold his nerve when under attack from drivers behind him. And every time so far, he has managed to do so. Through the final corner comes Harry Prochik. Your own Blinkermolen qualified the car second, took the lead of the race, handed over to Harry Prochik, and the checker flag is waved, and Prochik wins the qualifying race here in the Algarve. Second place then for Max Goetz and Max Boog. Third for Enzo Eid. Fourth place is going to be Cesar Ramos. Afanasiev finishing in fifth in the second HTP car. Sixth across the line for Roman Rusinov, the pole sitting car. But there is your own Blinkermolen opening the door. And it was a really impressive defence from Harry Prochik. Around the outside, down at the head, and he managed to hold it. And that was very impressive indeed. We can now go down and hear from our race winners. Jerome, congratulations. Flag to flag victory. Yeah, great. Uh, it was the hard work today. I thought uh, looking at after the practice and the qualifying, we were going to be very strong in the race as well. But uh, actually, they were catching me when the tyres went off. So uh, maybe we have to work on setup. But anyway, to win is great, of course. Great pit work to get Harry Project back out in the lead. It was almost, almost the Mercedes got ahead of him. Yeah, he did a great job because actually on that lap, when I came in, it started to rain into turn one. And uh, obviously, Guts had already the feeling of how the track was and he had to kind of feel it so I was surprised he could keep it up and stay in front on this first lap out but afterwards yeah he could pull away a little bit and yeah it was just a great performance here's a look at the results after the qualifying race then 32 laps completed and the Lamborghini Gallardo FL2 of Grassa Racing with Harry Project and Jerome Bleekemola win the race and they'll start on pole position for the main race tomorrow second place Max Book and Max Goats bringing the gap at the top of the championship down to just two points, uh, sorry, down by two points to uh, 16 points. Third place for Enzo Eden and Rene Rast, four seconds back in the end. And then in fourth place, the number one Audi of Cesar Ramos and Laurence Van Thor, and they will be desperate to try and get a good start tomorrow and try and get a good result finally in a main race because they've struggled so far this season. Sergei Afanasiev and Steph Dusseldorf finishing in fifth position. And then in sixth place, the pole position car, Thomas Eng started it, had a moment through the final corner. He handed over to Roman Rusinov, and they finished down in sixth place. Silver Cup winner, Vincent Abril and Mateusz Sosowski, Wolf and Stoltz, second in the Silver Cup. Bueno and Jimenez for Team BMW Brazil in ninth place, ahead of their teammate Stump and PK Jr. The biggest trophies of all going to our race winners. Harry Project and your own Bleekemola for the fourth time this season on the top step of the podium. So here's a look at the points then in the championship. As you can see, 16 points between Max Goetz and your own Bleekemola. They are 16 points behind Maximilian Goetz up at the top. Max Buch is now level on points with them. Enzo Eden and Rene Rast are fourth in the championship. Kaka Bueno and Sergio Jimenez in fifth place as the champagne is sprayed here after an entertaining qualifying race and that has set the grid for the main race tomorrow. Jerome Bleekemolen and Harry Project will start on pole position. So the grid is now being cleared, about 30 seconds to go until the green flag lap gets underway here in the Algarve. Let's have a look at how they will line up ahead of the main race here in Portugal. On pole position then, Harry Prochik alongside him on the front row, Max Gertz, the two championship challengers locking out row number one. 
It's a WRT second row. Enzo Eads starting ahead of Cesar Ramos as they desperately try and make their good pace into a good main race performance. Sergei Afanasiev and the new Dree Drive Lamborghini of Roman Rusinov will start in sixth spot. Vincent Abril and Lucas Wolf are starting on the next row of the grid. Those are the two cars battling at the front of the Silver Cup. An all Brazilian row number four with Caca Bueno ahead of Mateus Stump. And then we've got Mark Basseng starting ahead of Stem Pentas in the Bitec McLaren. And Mark Basseng is the first of the Pro-Am cars. Thomas Jaeger in 13th on the grid. Then Alex Zanardi, 14th in his new livery for this weekend. 15th on the grid, Amar Ibrahim ahead of Sasha Halleck in the second Grasser Racing Lamborghini. 17th place on the grid will be Fabian Hamprecht, hoping to make up for a poor result yesterday when Stefano Telli went off at the very first corner. 19th on the grid will be Nicky Mayer. Mount Offhill starting front of Fabio Anidi. Again, those two came together yesterday in the qualifying race. And then Francisco Mora and David Fuminelli complete the grid here in Portugal. The top two in the championship are in the top two places on the grid here in Algarve. Harry Prochik chasing Max Coates for the lead of the championship, and it's Prochik who has pole position ahead of this one-hour main race. The fifth round of the 2014 Blancpain Sprint Series about to get underway. There's one of our onboard cameras. He's with Caca Bueno as they will now crest the hill. They'll see those red lights and they'll wait for them to go out here in the Algarve. There we go. Here we go on board with Bueno. Who's got the best getaway as they charge down towards the first corner? It's Harry Project. He's away in the lead of the race. It's second position for Max Coates as they come down to turn one. Great start from Roman Rusinov in the orange Lamborghini. He's up into third place as they dive into the first corner. Everyone looks like they're safely through, but it's Harry Project who has the lead. He's got Coates right up behind him. Not quite close enough. Then third for Rusinov. Fourth is Sergei Afanasiev, I think, in the HGP Mercedes. Fifth place is the WRT Audi of Cesar Ramos. So the two Audis that started on the second row of the grid have lost a number of places. As we go on board with Caca Bueno, right up behind Mateus Stump, his teammate, looking towards the inside line on the way down to the hairpin of turn five. Not close enough, but Harry Prochik did a good job, and he's in the lead of very, very deep on the brakes from one of the um, sports and new Mercedes, but Prochik did the job he needed to do. Absolutely perfect start from Harry Prochik. Got the advantage, used that pull position, and just outgunned the Mercedes Benz of Max Gurch, who was unable to do anything. I'm delighted to say somebody in these cars is listening. All 22 cars got through turn one without contact. Looking a little bit wide there, though, was uh, Dominic Bauman as he got pushed out to the outside. Thomas Jaeger, my apologies, starting that car. And look at that, he's getting past. Oh, I think he's got a problem. He must have a front right puncture there. And so that's a disaster for Thomas Jaeger, winner of the last race in the Slovakia ring. But he looks like he's picked up some sort of puncture and is dropping back down through the order. But there's our race leaders. They are nose to tail. And Maximilian Goetz is pretty close to the back of Harry Brochik. Over the crest they come to complete the first lap. And Brochik knows it. He's driving right in the middle of the road. So he can do, to go defensive if necessary. And I'd say he might need to because here comes Max Goetz looking to the inside line. Project's going to hang on around the outside, and he does so, but they both go off the track limits, and that's going to be an interesting debate. Certainly, Harry Project, in a sense, it was, he was forced to go wide. He had on one option to lift off, let the Mercedes go through, or hold position, but then having to run wide on the outside of the track. That'll be reviewed. I think it'll come down as a racing incident, nothing ventured and nothing gained by either driver or car. But certainly, while there has been no contact that we have seen, very close racing. Down the outside this time for Max Coates, again trying to make the cutback and Harry Project to drive off the corner of the Mercedes. Lamborghini, we saw all the mirror of this yesterday when Project made his pit stop, but this time Goetz has got it. He might have done it here. Harry Project holds the inside line. Goetz was so close to the back of him. Now he'll get the inside line into the next right-hander, and he's forced his way past. Project is still going around the outside. Brilliant driving from the Austrian. Somehow he's managed to hold the lead of the race, but we're on lap two, and he's already under massive pressure from the Mercedes behind. And, I mean, great. Oh, Goetz again trying to dive. You can't really do that there because you don't know where the racetrack is and where the off track ends. So Gertz pressuring right now at every opportunity. Harry Project, the Czech driver, doing a, I mean, an outstanding job to resist this pressure. Down towards the hairpin of turn five. They come, here comes Gertz. Now surely he's got the job done. Project won't be able to hold that one around the outside. And Maximilian Gertz moves into the lead of the race. Roman Rusinov now will be the next man to try and get past Project, but maybe Project can stick with the Mercedes. But the championship leader, Maximilian Goetz, has found himself in the lead of the race at the main race here at the Algarve as the safety car is deployed moments after the change for the lead. Oh, there, and there the we reason. go, it's an Contact, Audi. Yes. I think that's the Silver Cup Audi. Being Vincent started Abril. by Vance on Abril. Oh, ah, contact with the, is that the Fortec Mercedes? It is. 
So let's have a look at the replay of the start. Harry Brochett got a good getaway and he immediately took the lead of the race. Max Gertz tried to follow him. Look at the two Audis getting swamped in the middle there from the second row. Brochett did a good job. Rusinov did a good job to get him into third place. And Sergei Afanasyev making it through as well. So the two Russians following each other through the first corner. Everyone else was safely through. Mark Basseng was looking pretty racy around the outside. But uh, it was the real bunch up into turn number three. But everyone managed to avoid each other. So the safety car will be coming in this lap. So Max Goat slows the pack down, and then in a minute he'll stamp on the throttle, and Harry Brochick will try and go with him. He's going very slowly around turn 14, but now he gets on it. We go on board with Brochick in second place, and that's a good restart from Maximilian Goetz. He's got a decent advantage as they come through the final corner. The man who hasn't got a great run is Cesar Ramos. He's got Enzo E right behind him, and again, the two BMW Team Brazil cars are right with one another. As they come across the line then, racing resumed after a very brief safety car period. It's half a second between Gertz and Project. Mark Basseng going super defensive because he's getting attacked by one of the Brazilian BMW cars, who, uh, which is uh, Caca Bueno, of course, because Mateus Stump has been into the pits. And they come, and I think one of the Audis had a problem there. Yes, Cesar Ramos was off on the inside of the first corner, wasn't he? And he's now dropped all the way back to that number one car, came across the line in fifth place. He's now just slotted in behind Sten Pentas in tenth. Here's so Wolf coming back. past Afanasiev. Oh, the two HTP cars hit each other. They are not going to be happy about that. Lucas Wolf trying to go up the inside of Sergei Afanasiev, and it's not ended well. And as a result, Wolf has now reversed back into the gravel trap. That's Lucas Stoltz furious, but he, he just let the car roll back, and now he's ended up beast in the gravel. Yeah, I mean, he, he went, he tried to make a move on the on, uh, Asa, Akanathiev into turn one that was always going to be very close, always very challenged. Here we go. The replay. He goes up the inside. He would feel, actually, at that point, he had the corner, but once the commitment was made by, as, as an athlete as it, yes, it, um, it was never going to be a happy result. And interestingly, Sergei Afanasyev has been handed a drive-through penalty for his part in that, uh, in that collision. Yes, I mean, all the, reviewing it, clearly the other Mercedes of Luca Wolf was alongside. Afanasyev just then shut the door on the racing line. He felt that he had the corner, the other car, Luca Wolf's car, was there. It doesn't vanish, it's not a magician. And that was the reason why he's been given that penalty. As we see Afanasia coming into the pits, that means he's built his lead gap up to 6.4 seconds at the front of this race. Really impressive from Maximilian Gertz. He's lapping a second a lap quicker than Harry yeah. Project behind. I mean, I mean, the simple reason is that he's got the clear air, he's able to drive the racetrack, choose where he wants to put the car. And right now, you have to say Max Gertz, regardless of whether a Mercedes or a Lamborghini is the quicker of the two cars, you have to say Max Gertz is the quicker of the two drivers. So here comes the attack from Lucas Wolf, not for position. He's just unlapping himself from the 11th place man, Fabio Anidi, looking to the outside at the first corner and goes all the way off the road. And that'll, I mean, if that is a pass, it'll have to be given up. It's not a pass whether he backed off and let the McLaren take its position, but he's certainly back on the tail and giving it a slight assist as they come through turn three, then up the hill, turn left, through turn four. Basseng has got the inside line at the second part of 14. They almost touch each other there as they come now into the final corner, but Basseng was very close. But no banana. No banana just yet, but let's see what he's got down the start finish straight. The Audi tucked right up behind the Lamborghini as they come across the finish line. This is the battle for third position and just a tenth and a half between them as they cross the line. Also worth keeping an eye on Caca Bueno. Basseng looks to the inside. Caca Bueno will be the quickest man of anyone. Oh, rusinov has gone wide and he's going to lose both positions. And that means Basseng is up into uh, third place. It's fourth for Caca Bueno. Fifth now for Roman Rusinov with Stem Pentas challenging him, trying to get around the outside and then the inside line for turn four. Good stuff from Stem Pentas. The Estonian is up into fifth. Roman Rusinov is dropping back down the field like no one's business because uh, Cesar Ramos has just gone past him as well. Yeah, I mean, one little almost a misjudgment error, whatever you wish to call it, from the Russian driver in turn one, opened up the door for four cars to fit to three at once. You lose your momentum as he did, even. It, was, it was never going to be a real overtaking maneuver. Into the pits then comes Maximilian Goetz. I thought they might have kept him out for longer, but I suppose they've got a 13.2 second advantage over Harry Prochik. Look, there's the race leader in the pits, and then we're still waiting. Here comes Prochik, you can hear him coming, and he dives into the pit lane to hand over to Jerome Bleekemolen. So that means Mark Basseng is going to move into the lead of the race now, 
and it's all about the pit stops. We've seen good ones from HDP and Grasser so far this season. We've also seen slow ones from the pair of them. There is Blika Merlin waiting, Brochet coming in. And the Mercedes is rolling, the Lamborghini's off as Jack, so it's going to be running. So it's a good stop from both teams, and it's almost, you have to say, fractionally to the advantage of the Grasser team. We'll see what happens. They're about to come out of the pits now. See well, how... it was nine seconds before the pit stop. It's not nine, well, maybe it is by the time he gets down to the white line. So it probably is pretty much even, Stephen. It was 12 seconds, and he's just crossed the line now, and that is 13 seconds, I make that, between the two cars heading out. But look how busy it is behind. Alex Zanardi is side by side there with, I think, uh, um, Stefan Ortelli now in the WRT Audi. And uh, Ortelli has squeezed him out, and he has taken the position. And there's Thomas Enger coming out. So that must have been a slow pit stop from Reiter because they've lost a number of positions again. Enger is now behind the likes of Alex Zanardi. Here's our race leader, though, meanwhile. Marc Basseng, yet to make his pit stop, and he's probably going to stay out for as long as possible before, he, before handing over to his amateur teammate. It's now Alex Zanardi's on the attack, trying to go past Stefan Ortelli into the first corner, holds the inside line. Ortelli runs way off the circuit. Zanardi's still there on the inside, and he gets through. Alex Zanardi passing Stefan Ortelli. Irrepressible, you couldn't imagine anybody but Alex Zanardi trying to make a manoeuvre like that on someone as competitive as Stefan Ortelli. This is going to be a reasonably straightforward manoeuvre, I think, for Marcus Finkelhock to pass Sasha Halleck, or well, maybe not. A little oh, bit of a touch right, as they come have, through the left hand. I think you want to revise that view. Okay. Look at the contact that's taking place, almost just goes the other way, cuts back one way, then drives up the inside into turn 13, gets the place this time. As we see, a good move up the inside. Giorgio Pantano yeah. initially going past, and then um, Marcus Winkelhock following through as they pass Stefano Colombo. So there's our race leader coming down into the first corner. Maximilian Buk has retaken the lead of the race then. And I think Rotelli now looking, he feels he's seen enough of the back of Zanardi's BMW. I think he feels it's time to try a manoeuvre. Certainly closing up to him into turn three. Looks down the inside into turn five, and it's a very long way he's come from behind. But he makes the move, stick and Zanardi make the cutback. No, Thomas Enger's got to think about a manoeuvre now. Not through the left-hand turn six, but dived down the inside into turn seven. Zanardi gave him room to make the manoeuvre again. Well, could I, say, could I say that again, just to say he could think about going down the inside? Thomas Enger does it. He goes through then past Alex Zanardi and is up into sixth position. He will start to chase down Stefan Ortelli now. And that'll be interesting if they can close in on Alessandro Latif, because Latif is currently in fourth spot, but he's the am in the pro-am pairing there. Look at that sideways as they came through the final corner from Marcus Vingelhock, and he's going to be right behind the BMW. The BMW is good through that final corner, though, and uh, you can see how quickly they've been closing in on Zanardi over the last three laps there. Yeah, I mean, Vingelhock now putting his nose into the mirror of the BMW. Well, the BMW is strong is in turn 15. It's got a lot of downforce. The car looks the most stable of all. Of course, following behind Rene Rast, he's getting all the dirty air off, not the bit. Oh, up the inside. Well, not far enough up to think about it, but Rast is. He's going to have a little look now because he's going to be in position as he comes out of turn four to have a look down the inside into turn five. So that's the opportunity that Rast has been waiting for. It's a question of whether man for Marcus Winkelhock is going to give him the opportunity to do so, not this time. Goes Here to comes Winkelhock. Oh, that's very, very bold, and he forces his way past Zanardi more than anything. Zanardi had to give him space because Winkelhock was coming whether he liked it or not. Zanardi a little look in the mirrors as he wonders whether... Rene Rast is going to go past him as well, and the answer is yes, around the outside. Damn. So that is now Vingelock up into seventh place with Rast into eight. Good mode racing from three professional drivers. Well done by Marcus Winkelhock into turn five. Great job by Rene Rast in and around the outside in turn seven. Not a corner you see anybody really attempting that manoeuvre on. So Alex Zanardi has had to concede to the pace of the two Audis as they have continued their battle now for what would be seventh place. Is this going to be an, an opportunity for Ortelli down into turn five? We've seen him make a few moves. Latif knows it. The Anglo-Italian covers the inside line and then heads back to the outside line. Here comes Ortelli late on the brakes, gets the job done. And that was just, he's just so committed, Ortelli. He goes for it, he goes for it. Yeah, I mean, that's good motor racing. You make your commitment and you stick with it. And Latif gave him the room. He made it as tough as he could. But he saw that Ortelli was coming down. Alessandro Latif defending along the inside line. Thomas Enger trying to find a way past, looks to the inside, he's got the overlap, and he will surely manage to get through now into fifth place. Latif 
tries to carry more speed. Oh, he, he was going for the cutback, but he just got out of shape. Yeah. And Roman Rusnov, very happy with that. Yeah, that was a good move. And Ale I mean, uh, Thomas Enger, I think he, did, he played a bluff on Latif because I think Latif thought that Enger was going to go back to the left and therefore that would give Latif the line. But in fact, Enger hung out to the right, tight against the pit wall and got track position. And Latif wisely then accepted that his position was gone. So Thomas Enger able now to make progress and he's going to move up into fifth place. But Otelli is a little bit further up the road. Now this is the battle and uh, Rene Rast has got past. So Rene Rast is past Marcus Fingelhock and up into seventh position by the looks of things. There's the number two car ahead of the number six car. They were in the other order when they crossed the line. So Rast has found the move and he is now up into seventh place. About three and a half seconds behind Alessandro Latif. So they may be able to catch him before the end of the race as well. Otelli, defending champion, of course, of the Blanc Pan Sprint Series, winning it last year with Laurence Fanthor, but I'd be surprised if either of them are able to uh, win the title this season, unfortunately for them. Less than 10 minutes to go here at Algarve, and now Alessandro Latif is under pressure. He's got Rene Rast up behind him as they come down towards the first corner, and following in is Marcus Winkelhock in the Phoenix Audi. So. Three Audis going nose to tail, and Latif might be able to help out his teammate here, but I don't oh, think yeah. so because no, I mean, straight up the inside goes Rene Rast. I mean, that was that was after you, after you, Rene. He was not going to impede the, the uh, progress of Rene Rast, and uh, whether that's team assist or whether he just has got enough performance left in the car. But clearly, you could see in turn one, Rene Rast was just taking lumps out of the, the gap between the two cars. It won't be team assist because they're in different teams to an extent, but. Uh, it will uh, potentially be just the thought that they're in the pro-am class. Yes, and, and therefore and it doesn't yeah. matter where they and finish. It's important, more important for Rennie Ras to get more points. Latif is in a strong position in his particular class, so he's not really fighting that particular Audi. But he's fighting the, his teammate Audi, which is quite interesting. If there was going to be team orders, it would be between these two. There well, we go. He figures it out in the yeah, end. Yeah, I mean, I think he's either he's got an issue on the car, or he may have just run out of gas himself. You never know. It's a physical racetrack. It's a lot of concentration warm even though there is that strong wind blowing down it's a, it's a, it is a tough circuit to drive so through the right hander how hard is bleak going to fight for this second position that's going to be very interesting how hard will he be able to fight because of uh, the lack of grip that he's got but if he loses down to third place that's another three points that he will lose out on in the championship fight which would take the gap up to 26 points with two rounds to go so three minutes left now they're onto the penultimate lap of the race here in Algarve, on board with Lawrence Van Thor as he chases down your own Bleekemola for second position. He's been reeling him in for the past, well, for the whole of the second stint, really, and now he's up behind the back of the Lamborghini. It's still Max Book leading the way in the HTP Mercedes. So, right, I can't get any closer, and he's going to look and think, have I got a chance? If I'm going to do something, I'm going to have to be maybe either committed or brave or both. And that's going to be down into turn five, runs very wide. Again, you know, is that gaining him an opportunity to come off the corner slightly quicker? He's going to look down the inside. Look, Kamala. Oh, he's going very late in the day is Laurence Van Thorpe. Bleak was out of shape on the brakes, but Van Thorpe gets the job done, and he's up into second place. The Grasser team dropped to third. If I was part of the Grasser team, I would say he gained an advantage getting all four wheels off the racetrack. Did he disrespect the corner and gain a benefit and therefore give himself the opportunity to launch himself down the inside? Question, luckily enough, we don't have to answer. Now, this is the perhaps contentious moment we were talking about earlier with John is that Lawrence Van Thor here takes so much speed through the left-hander, goes all four wheels over, whereas the Lamborghini was pretty much on the track and using that momentum, got up the inside into turn number five. Might be something the stewards have a look at. But through the penultimate corner now is about to come Maximilian Buch. He and Max Goats had a great start to the season in Nagaro and they have led the championship almost non-stop since then as they come out of the final corner now Maximilian Buch and Max Goats are going to take the main race victory here in Algarve they're going to extend their championship lead as the Mercedes wins in Portugal the checkered flag falls Max Goats and Max Buch win yeah. delight for Max Goats on the pit wall punching his fist as Max Buch takes victory second place is going to be Laurence Van Thor across the line Third place then for your own Bleekemolen. So a 26 point margin now at the top of the championship with still plenty left on the table. But out of the car, 
Climbs Maximilian Buk. He and Max Gertz take victory. And as Max Buk takes off his helmet, we'll probably start with Maximilian Goetz with John Watson. Max Gertz, great opening stint for you, got the lead, and from there on really looked very easy. Yeah, it wasn't easy <laughs> how it looks, you know, and uh, the goal was to overtake Harry as soon as possible. We had new tyres in the beginning of the race, so we have to take the advantage. And uh, yeah, then uh, luckily I overtake him, overtook him uh, just before safety car. And after safety car, I was uh, driving away because I could, could use the tyres uh, really good. And then, uh, yeah, this was the key uh, in the end. You also made an early pit stop. Was there a reason for that or was it just getting track position? No, we tried to give Max the possibility to get used to it as soon as possible because we know that uh, Jerome was driving with new tyres in, uh, in this time. And yeah, in the end it was, was the, the right decision because uh, I was on the edge with my tyres all the time. Uh, the, the, the pressure ra raised up a lot and then yeah, in the end we, we managed quite well because the gap in the end was the same like the before pit stop. Here's a look at the results after 33 laps. Maximilian Buch and Maximilian Goetz taking victory and extending their championship advantage. Second place for Cesar Ramos and Laurence Van Thor. Within third spot, Harry Prochik and Jerome Bleekemolen. Fabian Hamprecht and Stefan Otelli came from uh, 17th on the grid to finish up in fourth position. Roman Rusinov and Thomas Enger in fifth spot, a solid race from them. And also Rene Rass doing a great job to climb back up into sixth position after Enzo Eid had, we think, made contact with that uh, number one Audi in the early stages. And then Mark Basseng and Alessandro Latif winning Pro-Am. Victory for the two Germans in a frantic race here in Algarve.